Alex and Eric at Coramdale Farm. We are in entering year three Oklahoma flower farm that sells retail market bouquets from our roadside stand. I wonder how many of you actually have that intro memorized at this point, but it's a good intro. It shares everything in a short amount of time, but it's the very end of the year. It's New Year's weekend. And so it's time to do our end of year in review and I really enjoy these videos because it's helpful to us to get our thoughts down chronologically at the right time because you just tend to forget things of what happened so it's nice to record it. We actually both spent time listening to our mid-year in review and then our plans for 2023 video that we did back last December and January. We kind of got a kick out of the things that we said, what we thought would happen or that would we do but I do think that it is worth, I'll link it in the description to go and watch our mid-year in review if you haven't seen that because we go into a lot of detail of things that went well and didn't go well that we're not gonna talk about in this video because we still stand by what we said in that video. So instead of repeating those successes and lessons learned, we'll let you watch that video and then we're gonna talk about other things in this video, different angles of how we assess how this year went. But we finished. Yeah, we were we starting finished. to get onto our strategy at that mid year. So there's not really much that's changed, but there's a lot <laughs> that's changed from that 2023 video. But I'm sure we'll talk. The 2022 video. Oh, uh, well, looking no, to 2020. Plans for yes. it, it, the, the video thumbnail says plans for 2023 and like 2023 is on the thumbnail. Oh, I see. Yeah, looking to 2023. That's right. So that segues nicely into. What, if you can even remember back and it helped watching that video, where, where, where was our head at in like, let's say January and February of this year when we were, we were getting ready for a year two to start? Like, can you remember like, what were we thinking? To start this video off, I just oh. wanted to thank God for a successful year and bring you know him honor and glory because he is the fountain. He makes it to rain on both the righteous and the unrighteous. And so we're thankful for the rain and the good year he's given us. And we're very thankful for 2023. And we're super excited about what 2024 is to, to bring to yeah. us. When we made that video, we got into a little bit of an argument over how to classify what year we were in because we didn't really get a full first year in that we missed spring. And so that's a big season for flower farmers. And so it was hard to gauge after just a summer crop yeah. You know, were we going to be able to go all in on the flower farmer yeah. gig? So yeah. that video, you'll notice we talk a ton about the raised garden. Yeah, we... And we were being very responsive to what, you know, we had the combination of the farm slash gardens concept. That's kind of our brand is farm and gardens. Yeah. And we were inspired by a lot of like British gardening and building yeah. out you we know, garden space. spaces aesthetically pleasing spaces mm -hmm. and so much of that video will be reflecting on progress and improvement to the like our fruit garden. trees and our vegetables and even earlier in this yeah. year we had a lot of content about raised garden tours and you'll notice like all that kind of faded <laughs> as the season yeah went on i'd say because, like may it was a big yeah, shift because content. as the season went on and we were selling a lot we started to think more honestly about, you know, I mean, everything's time yep. and we're limited yep. in terms of time. And so we had to think it, was it, going it wasn't really like a question of being like, oh, I guess we'll have to draw back on selling a bunch because we want to go work. Yeah, because I'm going to go screw around in my race car. <laughs> we need to back off production. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't. You guys are buying too much. So there wasn't really like the decision was made for us. We didn't even talk about it. We just like right. adjusted. It was just it. like, we're selling a lot. So let's just go all in yeah. on selling. I know most people will say on YouTube, like you end up throwing away your first year videos. Because they're super cringe. And now I, I believe them because I look at them. They're cringe. A... You're learning how to talk to a camera. You're learning how to be, Maybe you know, what's your personality your look like. Maybe you changed your mind a little bit or like made some adjustments. Because like some right. things I did in year one that are on camera, like I wouldn't do again, like I've learned. So right. let's talk about how we viewed flower farming in general going into year two, because we were just like you guys, like we watched YouTube, we consumed all the, the cut flower books and Instagram and stuff. And so 
we clearly had at the time a perception going into year two of what we thought flower farming was and our opinion has very much changed after completing year two and we'll talk about that but let's talk first about going into year two what was our headspace we we were i guess just digesting a lot of content that made it seem like yeah. it's not profitable yeah it's more like a fun thing you can end up having a lot of gross revenue but it's not really a profitable endeavor but that's just what happens when you're only consuming certain sources yeah. especially in the youtube space i don't think there's a lot of positive i guess reflections examples, examples of, it of examples because i mean it's hard i think this is a hard thing and we'll obviously i think run into this next year yeah. and the years beyond is well, be honest. Continuing to be a YouTube Yeah, be honest slash about farm. that tension that is, that maybe people don't realize what's happening with creators. Right, because this is, yeah, I mean, the question from like a business perspective yeah. would be, do you make enough income from YouTube to offset the extra labor required to film yeah. and, and slow you down when you're doing just regular work? And the answer is, you know, right now, it's probably not as profitable. No as what you would make to just be more efficient with your time. With your farm, yeah. Like taking 30% more time to film a video isn't necessarily reflected in like how much that video ends up making us versus like get that done faster or make more bouquets or that's what we hope to be a positive example. And like our current pace on YouTube videos has slowed down from where we were in 2022. We were doing two a week and now it's once a week. We were almost doing three a week at some yeah. times. Like I Maniacs. was really working Maniacs. to push out you gotta content. You hard in the beginning, you know, really do right. the extra mile. But also what you're saying is like you do, and that I'm sharing this because now that I'm on, we're on the YouTube side, people that consume YouTube may not understand this. So it's worth it to explain. It's like when you're monetized on YouTube, and you're making good money on YouTube, there is always going to be that tension point between what, how much a video could make you on YouTube and maybe what that content is actually doing for you on your farm. So let's give an example. I could buy 5,000 gladiolas and know that I can make a video saying unboxing 5,000 gladiolas, you know, with like, big clickbait and stuff. And I know that like, that's not going to be profitable on my farm, but that YouTube video is going to make me $2,000, let's say. That affects the content that's created, but then also the decisions you're making on your farm. And so the perception can look like they bought that on their farm budget for their farm. But what's really the decision is like, this is great content for YouTube and this video will make me X amount of money. Now I'm not begrudging that because obviously you work very hard over the course of many years to create and build YouTube channels. Like you very much earn that monetization, but it's just, I guess what we're saying is like, be mindful sometimes about the content you're consuming and realizing like there's more decisions behind that, that can't just be put in the like flower farming silo. Like this is a decision you could also make on your farm when perhaps that video was made more for the YouTube space or the Instagram space than it was they would make it privately and no one saw it on their farm. The reason I'm sharing this, I think, is because going into, to go back to our initial question, going into year two, I think we both very much had the view from the content we were consuming the profitability in flower farming is incredibly challenging. It's very rare. It's extremely expensive upstart. And you have to spend a lot of investing in money for five plus years to then hope to see profit. I think that was kind of- I think that's what we thought. That Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what we thought going into year two. And so Eric was being conservative. We didn't really know what was going to happen, so we weren't going really big in case that ended up being true. And that's very much not what we believe now at the end of year two and with other sources of content we have consumed since then that has told a very different story. So if I had to pick like my big aha of the year, it wouldn't necessarily be like, I fell in love with this flower, this flower did so well for us. It would be a very big mindset shift of what's possible with flower farming 
versus what I thought flower farming looked like January and February of this year. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So we were influenced and I know early in the year I had conversations with you saying, yeah. Is this really going to be like, successful? I, I think we should make sure we're diversified. Yeah, you're like, I don't want to spend $50,000 a year for five years to maybe be profitable. Right. Like, I'm not super into that gig. <laughs> and now that we have another year under our belt, I think it's very clear that there is. And then, of course, we're starting to feature these real yeah. flower farms. I'll link it below if you haven't watched our interview with Jen Jenny Marks. She grows, to give you a little quick spiel so you watch that interview, she grows on less than an acre with two employees and she grosses over two hundred thousand dollars so that's we're starting my here and thankfully because i think our intuition started kicking in again that mid-year review we haven't changed from that but that no. that mid-year review we sat down and did it because we were having a haas yeah that's a good way to put it and like Aww. but we weren't that wasn't reinforced by hearing from these experienced flower farms or hearing from people who are on like the AFCFG board, it just, that, that has come in later in the year. Validating. Reinforce some of this intuition that we had about, you know, the difference between gardening and being a cut flower farm. Yeah. And your focuses and your time and your energy and your business, the business side of things. And this is a decision I think a lot of people listening to this need to make is yeah. you know, if you consume a lot of YouTube content and that's all you're hearing about flower farming, you're probably discouraged. We do this because we want to encourage people and because we started doing this. Yeah. Back when we were total noobs, we have cut back on like the pace of videos Yeah, and we don't try to invent. And obviously the focus of our videos has become almost more podcast format a lot of times yeah. than it is you know, purely like a well, media experience. Well, because one of the things we kind of shifted to, like you're saying, is the beginning with our channel and like going into this year, it was a lot of like, I felt like a competent gardener. Eric really wanted to lead in the flower farming idea to see if it really could be a business. And then, oh yeah, this can be a business. And we, at the time, were like, not many people are talking about this, especially in the YouTube space of... Like, let's talk about business. Let's talk about marketing. Let's talk about budgeting. Let's talk about labor. Let's talk about profitability. You know, there's been wonderful YouTube channels and videos that have been created on like starting Snapdragons from seed and how to, yeah, like planting and netting and, you know, tilling and all that burning landscape fabric. Like those videos have been created and they're very helpful resources. But when you go to like, if you were to go to YouTube and search like how to be a profitable flower farm, it's like at this point, our videos are going to show up because that's not a lot in the YouTube space. And so we pivoted and we were like, let's talk about what we're learning and observing and provide different content that we kind of wished we had and didn't just like stumble into exper experientially. So that's how the YouTube channel has kind of shifted. That's how our mindsets have shifted now here going into the next year and our hope going into 2024 with our content creation is not just to be like business and marketing and stuff and you know we obviously have to grow flowers and they have to be beautiful flowers and an excellent product so those are clearly going to be featured but we want to do so with a mindset of like efficiency and sales and like how we are moving these flowers like how quickly can i make bouquets what do our formulas look like so that they can be the most profitable you know that kind of content versus like i space my snapdragons at six inches you know like at this point i kind of feel confident that there's so many wonderful free resources out there for those answers that we want to fill a different space that it might be much harder for you to find those answers too so and there's also a lot of geographic variability yeah climate subclimates bug pressure weed pressure if you're in it's Michigan, hard to you're gonna look different than us yeah it's hard to just like go on youtube and be like how to plant snapdragons and you'll find out you know a person lives a very different place or different to soil. Plant them. like right. that's completely different like well, i mean you got didn't you get ranunculus seeds or something or maybe it was something else and we had a spring video and you were like you can't plant them then because that won't work yeah yeah it was like okay. i think we had a video called like mystery box on box and they sent you like ranunculus in like may and it's like well and they were like no but they said like on the package it's plant that, in spring plant in spring and you're like if you plant them in march not like, in oklahoma you're, you're not gonna, gonna see them 
yeah so that's a good like so let me ask you a question Ooh, we didn't prepare this i know i like ad hoc a question on the fly i'm ready so i'll be honest we talk about this like we're not trying to be a technical how-to channel well we're definitely going to share tips we're definitely going to do things as our experience yeah. goes yeah you know it's not going to be like a here's a highly technical video although some of them might be like i know i have a how to make a a farmer's friend you tunnel a technical tunnel build video right. or like he's your man how do i do this water align like obviously like sometimes we'll do a technical how-to video um you know kind of trying to appeal to a different audience here and there maybe some of the men out there who are farming oh you meant um, having to build and i'm irrigation. sure we're gonna i mean i'm hoping we can start doing a lot more fun stuff with this channel like yeah. maybe we can go to some of our local farms and oh, yeah. we can talk to our neighbor and do an interview about the tour. produce farm to get a tour of our neighbor's veggie farm we got a huge walnut or pecan what is it down the road pecan That'd be cool. Like, be there'd be some fun that. opportunities for us to talk to others and maybe talk about profitability of farms in and general. We're going to continue. My goal, and t please tell me in the comments if you guys like this, but my goal too is like to continue to get interviews to do on the channel because like you just said, it is diff like there are common denominators of non-negotiables in business and also in flower farming. But within that, there is a lot of variety. And so I really enjoyed Jenny. She's in New York and she came at it from, you know, this angle. And then like our next video is going to be another interview and she's going to have very much a different angle to talk about. And so I would like to continue to bring on different people, maybe like on a monthly basis or every other month to interview from different aspects of flower farming, whether it's like a farmer florist or like we, for example, only sell retail. But I know a lot of you guys that watch our channel do want to sell to florists like wholesale is very much a model you want to follow it's like i would love to interview a flower farmer that's like knocking it out of the park in the wholesale department and is profitable you know in that way so that like we don't become the only flavor ice cream that's possible to achieve profitability but kind of bring in these other stories that all agree on the same like principles and objectives right so what we need to have this like it yeah. needs to be its own video, like principles oh, no. to a oh, successful yeah. flower farm. That'd be good. That's, that maybe summarizes clip notes, because I know a lot of our content's getting longer form, we're talking longer, yeah. and I get it. Like podcast. We look at our YouTube statistics, <laughs> and y'all watch maybe 10 to 20 minutes of a video. Yeah, people watch them longer now. No, our biggest fans do, yeah. but... We're expanding their attention span. But like Lovely. the Jenny video, a lot of average view that. count is 18 minutes. Yeah, you and you're missing a lot of gold if you only watch 18 minutes. I know, she had more than Like I said, you can click that. Everyone needs to understand, like, if it's a long-form video, there's a little gear icon. Ooh. Click it. Yeah. And pick a different speed. Oh, gosh. Speed it up to 1.5. You can get an hour in 40 minutes at that rate. Yeah. You can put it at two times. It might sound funny. And until we have actual flowers to show, you guys could just watch some of this like a podcast. <laughs> just put your earpods in and just like listen while you do chores and stuff. But I don't need to worry about my hair. I, I know you worked so hard on your hair. Everyone appreciates it. Does everyone appreciate my Did hair? Did you ask my question? Well, the question, question is, I'm trying to talking? think of like a, a motto or like a base, like overriding principle that we've learned this year. Because like you said, like you're combining... You do need a quality product. So we yeah. listened to a podcast. Lisa Mason Ziegler is like somewhat disheartened by a lot of the, you know, the local flower farmer Poor quality. not producing good product. I mean, a lot of that had to do with harvest timing. Yeah. Blown really. open flowers means yeah. short lasting bouquets, which gives local flower farmers a bad name. Yes. So I understand that like part of us doing this video is to help raise the overall bar. yeah like let's seek excellence so i think i know and then there's asking. kind of like on the other side it's like obviously good product but like if you spend like a lot of flower farmers for the love of the flower they only they, they spend only it. spend it and they yeah. pursue a plus flowers but they don't spend any time yeah. on like this other stuff on business the business marketing, labor time efficiency budgeting, profitability budgeting marketing yeah, marketing bringing the customers so that you can achieve these goals yeah and so i'm trying to say like can we synthesize real time i think you just did didn't you, you did like a i did i kind of did but like it's not very catchy you answered your, well i'd have to think about a catchy i can't do catch on the fly catchy like a catch on the fly we need another t-shirt <laughs> more we're just creating more like 
imaginary merch. We had we had another yeah. recommendation from our last video for a tea. Was it spaghetti? It was something sweet. Avoid the spaghetti. Yeah, watch the Jenny video to understand that. Avoid the that spaghetti. Inside Jake. So let's do a little bit of like some quick stats of 2023, especially if you're new to our channel and you're like, who are these people and what are they saying? We sell only from our roadside stand. And this year we were only open on Saturdays. We would open at 9 a.m. and we'd close when we sold out. We had very few Saturdays where we didn't sell out and we would typically close by noon, depending on how much we had left because in the summer, I didn't want to limp the bouquets along and have them wilt or there were like three left and it just was easier to shut down the stand and move on with our with our to-do list that day than to kind of keep it open, so to speak. Most day, most Saturdays, it's sold out typically by 11. And we started with putting maybe 20 bouquets out and we ended the season with a goal of like between 40 and 50 depending on kind of like the feedback I was getting that week, the vibe from our customers of how big I maybe thought it was. She'd run be. into my office and be like, I've got this many likes on the Facebook post. I think I need to make more bouquets. Yeah. So I'd kind of like vibe check how many I was going to make, vibe check. but that was a big increase to go from 20 and to ending with like closer to 50. So that's where we were at. And then we grew about 18 varieties of flowers we've shrunk that down to like 15 for next year and um, so i've re i've replaced a couple and a couple just totally got the axe and i don't want to grow more flowers because we feel strongly about the steak and potatoes model which is less flowers in bigger quantities to be more efficient and create that excellent product because your brain is not having to learn how to grow harvest condition arrange 40 different varieties, you're doing 15. And so you can be efficient and excellent and not have your brain kind of feel like spaghetti to get that, to get that done correctly. We sell only one style bouquet. It's $20. And depending on what's blooming at the time, it'll have between nine and 11 stems of various quantities and stuff. We get requested this a lot and we are going to make a video talking about all of our bouquet formulas. So if you'd like to see exactly like what I put in our April bouquet and our May bouquet and that kind of thing, that video is coming, but it's about nine to nine to 11 stems makes up our $20 bouquet. And that is about 17, $18 worth of flowers. And then two to $3 of time and material is what goes into um, our product that we sell. Oh gosh, I just opened our to-do list. That's frightening. <laughs> I don't want to look at that. And our season length, our season started like March 20th and we ended the last Saturday of September. We closed in April and August. August we closed by choice and we're purposeful about it. Most of April we were closed because like Eric said, we were trying to be conservative and so we in invested in tulips, but I wasn't quite ready to invest in all of the different spring flowers, which can get more expensive. And so I did not have ranunculus growing. I grew a small trial patch, but not enough really to sell. And in our state, April is the ranunculus flower. So we kind of had a lull there and then ramped back up in April, June, July, closed in August, great September. And then um, we closed in October, which I ended up liking because we have such a long to-do list to close down the farm and to get ready for the next year. So I guess what would that be? March, May, June, July. So five months, even though our growing season is seven months, was this year. So it was like a fast, fast overview. Like I said, we are not gonna repeat a lot of the lessons learned that we did in our mid-year review because it all stays the same, but we originally had the flower stand in the front of our driveway to start tulip season. And our tulips went well. It is hard to grow tulips in Oklahoma, so it's not as common like in other parts of the country where lots of people have tulips in their landscape and they naturalize or they can buy them from the store and just plant them and they grow. That's not the case in Oklahoma. So us having tulips, especially when none of the other flowers in people's yards had woken up yet, it was so popular. It was bananas. So I think we uniquely live in a place that is just always really going to love tulips and it's going to be a great profitable option for us. And so having tulips this year, I think just like was the on-ramp 
to get us really going and put us on the map. We got a ton of follows, we got a ton of attention because we had almost 3,000 tulips for people. And it was a real fast flash in the pan. I feel like it was three, maybe four Saturdays, sold every single stem I could harvest and get out there. And it was wonderful. And so that's why we're doubling for next year. I'm really excited for tulip season again, but starting with tulips really, I think launched us into how many flowers we ended up selling the rest of the year. It was a really strong start. What'd you think about the beginning? And even if people grow stuff in their landscape, they don't cut it in the same you can't way. Cut it, and they don't. They're they're not going to grow to the same stem length. No, cut it's flower not like farming. This big in Oklahoma. <laughs> cut flower farming is just superior because you're going to produce a product with a longer stem and that elegance and beauty that that brings to the long. I mean, your tulip stems were. We have that picture of Barrett I know. where he's like, it's almost the size of our. So even in places where girl. people grow flowers in their gardens, like, I mean, cut flowers are, it's a different product in my opinion. Yeah. It serves Even a landscape. different purpose than landscape. A lot of people don't want to cut Like, remember the feedback flowers. we got a lot was like, I grow zinnias, I yeah. know how to grow zinnias, but yours are the biggest I've ever seen. Right. Yours are the best. And it's like- And this is where you get like, a lot of people in their landscapes can grow the C minus C versions of these flowers mm -hmm. and their color. You know, you're not getting too close to them. Or they don't know the varieties that we're growing in the flower farming world that are like the best of that variety. Like they're probably growing the Lowe's packet of zinnias, whereas like we know to grow banaries because that's the the right. biggest. They don't know those things. So like it seems very special here. But even if, like, even if people have like a peony plant mm -hmm. in their property, yeah, we're still going to grow a long stemmed peony that they want in their house too. And it's not going to be damaged probably in the same way that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's an interesting thing because like cut flower farming is different than landscaping. Yeah. And that's, in my brain, it's, I mean, I know it's kind of like a duh, but like, I think a lot of people, I learned that this year is yeah. that you're landscaping flowers, even for people that you want to treat this, them differently often as a different product Yeah. because you bring it into your home. Most people don't go out to their landscape and cut their own flowers. I don't think that's a normal mm, thing. No. Right. Out of your landscape. Or they don't have the volume in their landscape. Well, that's what I mean. Like to have. Hey, you're plants. not going to take away the color on the outside of your house. Yeah. Like all your peonies bloom or your tulips are blooming. You're like, I'm just going to cut them all down. But I want that color in the front. Yeah. I, I want to be able to see it in the house. Yeah. It's kind of like a, for a guy, it's like a handsome car on the outside, but it's like, you only really experience the inside of your car. <laughs> so that's funny. you care about the interior as the owner. The outside's kind of like a more of a. What's the phrase? A superficial adornment <laughs> of how the vehicle is. That's funny. So, I don't know what your question was. I don't know. You, you that, the, the, like, we're doing great at interviewing each other. We just, we just say, like, okay, you pause. Don't, I'm just, what are you talk. saying? I'm just going to talk what I want. I'm going to talk. Catch your I have my own You're thoughts. Like, what were we talking about? I got no. thoughts, people. <laughs> You're going to hear them if you make it this far in the video. No. Are we I, past 18 minutes? <laughs> Stop. We're at 33. Nobody's watching at this point. <laughs> it's just us. <laughs> no, my question to you is, do you agree that like, because tulips sold so quickly and so many people were excited about them, that it was kind of like really good momentum. It's what made the ranunculus timeout hurt. Oh, it's so painful not to have flowers, but I know you said, I, spent a lot I know of you time said marketing. like, I don't regret that decision, but in April, early May, we, I, we were yeah, we didn't have flowers for like three and a half weeks and so i had to muster up my like max marketing it was it was not i mean like keep people <laughs> i know you're saying like you would do that again i don't like personally i would risks. say no well i was just i didn't know if i could grow ranunculus I and so i didn't want to spend like a thousand we're very conservative so we've been a lot slower at like introducing plants as, i'm not a first year especially flower here farm in oklahoma. I, mean, ranunculus I get it like so oklahoma not... is like this is not the flower farming capital <laughs> of the world we're not replacing the netherlands anytime soon yeah. so we've been super conservative about instead of saying like, i'm gonna spend two thousand dollars on ranunculus corms and no. 1.5 no well i never do that but that was a hard month because you sold all those tulips like 90 yeah. percent of them and then i was like see you in may and everyone was like what's your next product and you're like i got nothing for about a month yeah it was hard and like we were just twiddling our thumbs we were waiting for sunflowers to grow yeah. 
We didn't even have flowers for Mother's Day. How painful is that? We yeah, we missed a big day. Yeah, so but that's we missed a big day. But does that make it more exciting going into next year, knowing that like we're gonna have well, this is the point. Like and we're gonna have Mother's Day flowers. Yeah, I mean, like I don't screw it up, but well, I mean, and then obviously, hopefully, by year four and five with peonies, peonies. you know, and that's the hard one. That's the hard stop gap. Like I hope that when we open, like once we have peonies, when we open the tulips. When we open with tulips, it's just like getting on a raft, riding the rapids, and just like excited chaos, like March, April, and May. Well, I mean, like Jenny we probably have. makes half of her sales on ranunculus. Oh, yeah. I think she said, and this isn't saying something private, I think I listened to her give a talk, and I think she said of the 200,000, she makes like 80,000 just in ranunculus oh. and that's not even including i like, mean here this yes even on has. like you know some of the youtube channels it's like spring flowers and mother's day yeah. are half your year's income yeah and then you have to go through this hot long summer and it's worth it because yeah. like you want to stay open because obviously it'd be a big marketing lift to only be open like, like, i'm only open two for two months months. and then i have to spend 10 months out of the year if you're selling retail i know right. there's farms that sell to florists and they're like we nail the spring season and the florists buy for us for weddings and blah 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 but like keeping the attention of like six florists versus like a thousand customers is yeah. a way different marketing lift <laughs> so you want we want a long season yeah. for content i mean obviously for our youtube channel it matches our goals there because yeah. when you're in the winter and you're rowing so yeah i still don't know if i've answered your question i think you did i think you did. we can move past tips. okay okay so the big question we always get and it's hard to answer but i will acknowledge it is pest management okay. you know we allude to living in like biblical egypt with the amount of bugs we have in our first year we almost died from cucumber beetles this year i had a white fly meltdown in the fields where i thought we were just gonna have to like burn the farm down so, you know, not even talking about the three inch grasshoppers. So like we obviously have bugs and it's going to be a big thing for us to deal with every year. But unfortunately, and I'll let you talk because I don't want to disagree with you, but mm. it's we don't have yet, you know, in humility, like we don't have like this is what we do. This is our schedule. This is dialed in because we are only going into year three and learning Oklahoma and these different bugs and when they show up and when we should start things. And so like, we don't have the like, here's the answer, but we can talk about like maybe what we tried and what's kind of on our radar going into next year of maybe how we can not get to Alex crying in the zinnia row about white flies. Situation. I saved the zinnias. So. You did though, you were the hero that we all needed. We did. So, but you're a pest man, so I'll, I'll, let, I'll turn it I'm over. I'm pest man. Pest man. You got yourself your fancy backpack. I did. Get so. a motorized backpack. They're not yeah. that expensive. Yeah. And like doing the like pump thing and yeah, then like yeah. carrying that gallon thing. Your little, like your hand cramps. It doesn't thing. work for anything larger than a thousand square feet. So like, yeah. get yourself a legitimate. Treat yourself to that labor both, to save. You know, foliar sprays. and yeah. We'll use it to fertilize. Uh, so that's going to be a learning thing. I think it's a bit like doctors and antibiotics. You can't. Mm just say like here is the silver bullet i mean amoxicillin is kind of the silver bullet that everyone knows about but right. you can't just keep using amoxicillin over and over again right you gotta rotate and there's some things that it doesn't do as well and when you read all these universities and every state in america and i'm sure other countries have their own version since we have a lot of international fans i'm sure yeah, you could true. find your local version of a, a state university that does specific regional research. You're never going to say like, here's what you use. Yeah. They're kind of going to say, here is options. And like for with white flies, white flies has like a, it has kind of a first tier product, but because it's been used so much in the States, it's now like the white flies are developing resistances. They're like, we're on, like to antibiotics. <laughs> right. we're on to you. So now they're like, you should do some rotations. Yeah. And we're obviously trying to be a farm that's not just spraying. We're not like swooping a plane down and. No, so we try to stay within the like recommended organic range. And then obviously like when you say organic, there's definitions of what that word means. And then there's a spectrum therein because like, just because something's organic doesn't mean that it's not actually going to harm beneficials because it can, it just means it's not like a synthetic pesticide. It's not like Roundup, for example, but 
We, and we're not trying to grow Roundup ready flowers. Right. So we try to stay within like what's considered organic and not synthetic, but also. But not always. Sometimes you have to make decisions to right, go with a, a synthetic. Crop loss decision is a hard decision to make. And so within There's the. No less sprays than an international flower is going to have on it. Also true. <laughs> um, but yeah, within that, what I'm trying to say too, is like within that, there's a severity of the damage it could cause to the beneficials and stuff. And so we're not quite ready to give the like spray this for that advice yet. I mean, I really do hope that in year three, we are dialing it in more because on our own farm, like we do want to know, like, this is how we treat for cucumber beetles. This is how we treat for thrips. This is what we need to talk spraying. about that. What? The blister beetle infestation. No, I can't even because it didn't go to the farm side. And so we can pretend and it attack didn't the happen. tomato plant. Our neighbor dealt with the same problem. Yeah. So striped blister beetles. Our answer kind of is like we use organic choices and like the recommended use thereof, but we're not dialed in yet to where we're going to share like we sprayed this every two weeks and then we rotated with this like that's our goal but we're not there yet and so i think it's a bit negligent to be like just spray neem oil and everything you know that sort of advice was a joke and it's like we don't want to do Hold that on, let's give them one good tip okay okay let's give them one good I'll tip. give the people a tip of what we're talking about we're okay. trying to be a legitimate farm okay don't go to your ace oh yeah this is a lows. good tip and buy their pyrethrin products. The branded, yeah. Everybody sells the same, synth not synthetics, but just the same kinds of products and the different formula. concentrations, the diff yeah. mixtures. You know, a lot of them, I mean, a lot of them are way overpriced for what they are. A lot of farmers rely on pyrethrin. So we'll give you this one tip. If you've made it. <laughs> this far you get the tip. <laughs> the 42 minutes in our video, you've helped us earn some dollars. <laughs> your earned tip for watching us so this you can't buy in any of your local stores it's not like a black market thing guys it's just i got not... this from bolivia <laughs> for frank downtown it was in his coat jacket so that was funny like last year when you asked who had on um, that grasshopper what's that stuff called no low bait no low bait which because of covid the company like shut down thanks covid out of colorado and then like you were asking in the Oklahoma groups, like who's got Nolo baits? And then you just had like creepy You'd be like, I got no farms. I got Nolo bait. They're like, I got Nolo bait. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna find out. Yeah, I'm not going to your creepy whatever. Yeah. yeah. In your voodoo yeah. Nolo bait. But I mean like it probably became like a black market, like anti yeah. grasshopper thing, so all the Oklahoma farmers can grow their their weed. Because that's a leaf. And like that's what th this is the uh, interesting thing about grasshoppers. They don't go for the flower. They yeah. munch on leaves. They love Typically. on greenery. Typically, yeah. And so, like, they weren't yeah. actually a big risk to our farm. They're just gross. They're huge. But show them the tip. The tip, okay. But it, I'm building it. <laughs> I know, you're so proud of us. You work so hard to find it. No, I just asked my neighbor. Well, so, anyways, Pyganic is the most popular. But again, Pyganic gets sold in different concentrations and Ooh, different price points. Make it harder. You want to get the Pyganic. 5%. It's called Paganic 5.0 EC. There it is. Let's just zoom in. There we go. Now I gotta refocus on you again. <laughs> there you go. Paganic 5.0. I can probably list where I got this. I don't remember off the top of my head. You're gonna get it not at like the retail places. It's a lot of money. Get it at like an ag, a farm, like a farm store, or just like an ag online commercial kind of. But you saw there, it said one quarter to one half an ounce per gallon. So. So that's gonna last us a while. Most of the products are gonna say an ounce. Well, how get... much how we used? Yeah. So, this... And like how much is left? Yeah, I mean, like year. we so use this. Well, it's... we had a, we had a couple others of the two point, but the two percent. We're gonna go into. This should last this next season. Well, um, we'll see what the bugs have planned for us. <laughs> yeah, well, this is, I mean, we're going to have to use probably a couple others. We're going to use, especially for white flies, like we're going to have to use the typical. Yeah, now that we have the high tunnel, like that's a different ball game too. Like we don't really have to deal with thrips, but like thrips love them, some high tunnel and snapdragon. But so. the thing about pest management that we learned this year is that you need to integrate it on, into your weekly schedule. Yeah. Because most of it requires an application either every couple of weeks or every week. Some of them are longer lasting. Uh, some of the, a couple of the synthetic, well, one of the, we only used one synthetic last year. Yeah. And uh, it says it lasts a month, but you have to, 
you know, you heard feedback from our local ag extension office about yeah. like, you know, one week you should spray in the tunnel a pesticide and then the next week you spread a fertilizer. foliar fertilizer yeah. and then the next week you do the pesticide again. And it's good to start early. The problem that we learned this year is that when you wait until you have flowers, obviously then you're going to be dealing with impact to the bee population and yeah. that's not good. Yeah. So when you got little, and plus it's like, it's ridiculous to spray these huge yeah and you're supposed plants. to like it goes it's like spray over and under the yeah. leaves and you're all like, these ridiculous you advice to read online that's like get under the leaves so like i ain't getting under the leaves when uh, you like have a, a massive flower row. yeah yeah it's like and then especially with zinnias so the flies are like we're gonna live so you wanna leaves. you gotta start when they're little and it's spring and there's no bugs and we talked about this where it was yeah. your it's like you're deceived in the spring and early summer and there's no bugs and it's yeah. wonderful and beautiful and everything's happy and, then, and you're just like, I love this and place. And then they hatch. And then they, well, they hatch and then they start going through the bug cycle, shedding their skin, getting bigger and, and bigger and bigger, so bigger nice. and bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger. And then by that point, it's just really hard to deal with them. So you got to start early. So this year, we're, our tip is going to be like, if you're going to do pyrethrin, get it on the plants early and often yeah make it part of your schedule don't let them get a like home troubleshoot oh I right, don't wait do for this. the bugs to show up and be like yeah. now we got to get the pesticide just like on. just like you fertilize just like you succession plant just like you do your weekly tasks it's like you got to build in the pest management or it is going to be really hard to get on top of it so neem oil goes well with this so neem oil and this or like just i don't remember the exact details so somebody's going to correct me in the comments right, and be like, like you got it wrong you this more than you ever wanted to know in the end of year review. But this is the top. This is our now. tip. Yeah, I know. <laughs> They're like, thank you. They finally talked about bugs. <laughs> yes. But start earlier. We didn't start early this year and no. we were lucky. We did have to go to a, a synthetic to deal with white flies. It'd be nice to not next year. Yeah. Well, I probably still will, but I'll do it so early that that synthetic won't I mean, have like, the same we don't impact. have to pull in the big guns because, like, I'm threatening farm raising in emotions people want our zinnias so we have to save the zinnias that was the biggest problem last year was the zinnias yeah the white flies on the zinnias everything else was pretty good last question since we've rambled for a while this is also um i should plug this we have a facebook group that we admin it's called profitable flower farming for beginners and you can join it love to have you i'll link it below and I kind of like talk ahead of time with everyone in the group of like, we're getting ready to film this. And so I'll ask for feedback. And it's a helpful way, not just to rely on comments, but to kind of like directly talk to you guys and stuff. And I really enjoy it. Eric pops in every once in a while. And I had asked like, we're getting ready to film. Like, what are your questions? And so pest was obviously the biggest. And then this other question we got a couple times that we can conclude with. And it was just talking about, clearly Eric and I do this together. And we have four children that we homeschool. And so the kids are very much around. And so the question was basically this year, how did we manage having a family farm? Like the kids around, the fact that you work full time, the fact that I homeschool and I don't have a full time job. Like what did our days look like? Our hour commitments? How did we include the kids or manage the kids? Kind of like talk about that dynamic that isn't always seen in other flower farms, you know, that you might follow or see on Instagram, the fact that we have a lot of small people around all the time. <laughs> well, we talked at the beginning of the year and we talk even now, it's kind of the nice thing of a husband wife team is that yeah. you could have staff meetings. Oh, uh, is this a, a board meeting on camera? Yeah, it's a board meeting. <laughs> we talk lovingly. <laughs> How about five? You didn't groups? prepare a PowerPoint. I know some people say like in family businesses don't work. I don't buy it anymore. I think it's just a matter of whether or not you're going to, you know, bring the right level of leadership versus submission and following. And just not be super sinful and bratty. Right. <laughs> in both directions. Yeah. You know, that means at times if I'm being the wrong person and sinning in it, I will you know, confess and repent from those sins. And we try to do that, but we talk at the beginning of year of kind of like farm values. Yeah. And, and the reason that I had originally said before we moved here to do this was always about, I mean, it was really about our kids. Yeah. Ultimately. It wasn't about us. Like I don't need this farm. Yeah. You for, provide for us elsewhere for yeah. any of our income. But I want it because of a lot of reasons. I don't need to get into here. Yeah. But we talked last year of kind of like some basic principles of why we do this. 
And one is to bring glory to God. These flowers and the diversity in them and the fact that all these modern um, flower seed and corm and bulb companies are extracting yeah. out the reason that Florette can do a video mm -hmm. about creating her own kind of dahlia. And it was a fascinating video yeah. about the way she's trying to develop, not dahlia, zinnias. Um, zinnias. She's breeding, yeah. Um, it's beautiful. It's awesome because God put that genetic code, that information in there in creation. And there's a proverb that says it is God's, you know, desire to hide things in a king's glory to seek things out. Yeah. Um, and so, like, we're seeking out and unlocking these genetic secrets that have been in there since creation. And participating in its creation. <sighs> and so, like, we want to bring God glory. We want to use our land economically valuable. Um, the Proverbs 31 woman talks about buying land and using it for purpose. Yeah. I wanted something that you and like your interests yeah. could do because I'm going to work full time. I want my wife to be able to do yeah. something she's going to be good at. Yeah. And then of course, like we want to be downward focused for our kids from like a legacy perspective yes. so that they um, understand that like we're doing this. Like we've been planting these peonies and we've been telling the kids like these yeah. peonies could be for your grandkids' kids. Yeah. A it's peony like, can land could cut these like a hundred years. Like, right. If we can take care of them, like these peonies can provide some measure of income yeah. for a long time. Yeah. That's not quite a tree. No. But I mean but it's, it's investments in their future. Yeah. And like they've they've been like they've been talking about that. It's been very interesting yeah. as they help us deal with that, where they were like, and my, you know, my, my uh, seven year old son will say things like, Oh, what do you say? I don't know. He'll, he'll be like in a thousand years, we can, and you're like, no, I didn't say a thousand, <laughs> we said a hundred, like a hundred nine. years. It's not a woody. Thousand I don't even know how many thousand year old yeah, trees like we have. Redwood, but <laughs> whatever. Well, it's downward focused. And yeah. so we continue to always talk about that and uh, you know we're not perfect at it but i don't think families are and kids are to be um, a distraction or a nuisance in the achieving or something goal. that gets in the way yeah and i think that's i think that's like what society tells us now is that kids they cost a lot they get in your way of other things and like that's not yeah. that's not a they're biblical attitude to your own dreams right. as if they're not our part kids of that. are our future and i know that most people that end up having kids they say this that changes them and suddenly you realize like i gotta i gotta focus on my kid um yeah and what i mean it's kind of like they're they're next they're next up yeah and like you're you're getting older <laughs> yeah and so you become very downward focused and so like every you know it's not an efficiency conversation at this point at least initially when they're young i think that families are a force multiplier yes uh, i mean a husband wife team's already a full uh, a force multiplier because mm -hmm. you have two laborers obviously i can't labor during the work week right. and people want to know like <laughs> how many hours we work each week i don't think we've i don't think we've computed that no, like fully we, yet because it's so interwoven with life yeah because yeah we'll maybe track that maybe next year we'll do like a week we should like try a, to a we week. should clock in and we clock should do out. like a, a week in the life of kind of loggy style video where it's, it's like bursty yeah it's very bursty it's not like i worked nine to four on the farm it's yeah. like i did an hour here i came out at lunch yeah, i can't and, you can't say yeah. i worked 60 hours a week in the farm <clears throat> Yeah. But you're also efficient, so like we're probably gonna yeah. have less hours than people would expect. But it's still significant. I mean, yeah. like, but the thing is, is like we've been training our kids this year that Saturdays are work days on the farm. We Sabbath on Sunday. We rest on Sunday. We don't do anything on Sunday. At least we desperately yeah. try not to. I mean, I think that's important to say too, just in general, so people get to know us. Like when we plan our week and our work week and our labor and stuff, we, we don't do anything on Sundays work wise on the farm. Eric and I like to walk the farm and we'll talk about like maybe what needs to be done or things. So we'll just sit and enjoy it and stuff. But Sunday is not part of our weekend work. And so that very much orders how we spend the previous six days. And we convictionally very feel very strongly about that choice. And I think it becomes a blessing for us in not feeling burnt out and not be becoming too much where the farm is everything and then also going back to the family element it's like that's the day where we're not doing anything on the farm and so the kids we tend to do like we really like formula one racing so we'll like watch a race all together with the kids or i'll make them a really fun treat we go to church and it's just a very different day and that isn't a way with the children that we don't exasperate them in them feeling like they're 
periphery to everything being farm all the time. Like they're, that's not how we order our week and how we spend time with them. But they're also still very included. Like on work Saturday, there's the contrast, you know, like work Saturday, Sabbath on Sunday. And so. And they're getting used to work Saturday and we pay them. So yeah. Well, and we try to, and that, I mean, it, it motivates them. I don't think money is evil. I think that especially for young men, it teaches them the, not that women don't want to earn money too, or that a woman that works in the home as the Proverbs 31 woman does, she's, yeah. she's profitable. She's economically valuable. That yes. comes largely in your labor in the home. Yeah. But um, certainly you can consider a piece of land, purchase it, plant crops on it. And yep. I think that's very you biblical. Be wise and competent. And, and, and competent and focused and, on making yeah. it not a drag, but actually being profitable. And not just consuming. It's like you're creating right. things. Yeah. And that takes a level of uh, restraint and self-discipline to not yeah. buy the $5,000 gladiolus bulb <laughs> order, knowing that you can't sell that. Not being outrageously negligent in your spending. Right. So, but, yeah. but we've had challenges in that this year. Sometimes yeah. when you're working on we've a Saturday, days where the like, kids Ugh. earlier in the year where there was a lot of like shoo shoo get away. Yeah. And then we were convicted about it and we said, like, that's not the attitude. Like, if they come and they, they break a, a sunflower that we could have sold, it's like, that cost is worth it. Yeah. Like, maybe we just need to plant a couple extra plants next year, knowing yeah. that they will butcher it while they try to learn what we're doing. Yeah. We want them to love it. And I think a lot of people struggle with that because it's hard. It's really hard to be yeah, out there and like watch you your down. young kid. They can slow you down. Yeah, the butcher. Three -year -old so we made, <laughs> we're making decisions that are intentionally not hyper streamlined from a business perspective, like the YouTube stuff yeah. and the incorporating our kids now. Yeah. With the hope that the, I mean, everything is like, the, these are investment decisions, like to invest in your kids, invest in that downward focus so that yeah. One day the kids are very economically valuable yeah. to you and, and not to, to like better. treat them like economic units. But I mean, like, this is how big families were always thought historically. It's less rare to have your kids working with you than it is not in right. human history. So the fact that this seems rare is like, it's because we've departed we've as so a much. culture so much. Not that like we're doing right. something I mean, most strange. kids in history had to learn work to work dad fast and... and to be part of what makes most of the, I mean, agrarian societies exist for most of yeah. human history. And like your, your kids were, I mean, they were doing stuff. And our kids are inside watching a movie right now. I mean, it's now, funny so because not exactly like, wanting when you to. study, like the most popular boys magazines prior to the turn of the 1900s were like hunting and trapping because most yeah. young boys were expected to feed the chickens during the winter. Um, and they had to trap all the animals that the chickens would eat. And nowadays we're like, no, a seven-year-old can't do that. It's like my seven-year-old seven -year were supposed to go. <laughs> they were supposed to go and hunt and get or trap squirrels. Yes, they are capable and, and they can do it joyfully. And and you're yeah. I mean, you're two, you tutor your kids. You tutor your kids towards things. Yeah. And so now they ask, like, when do we help you work again? Yeah, they ask. So we're filming this on a Friday, and one of them asked me, they're like, tomorrow's work Saturday. It's been winter, what, so it's what been are we gonna Christmas, do? and, like, there's been not as many yeah. work Saturdays. But they know tomorrow's work Saturday, so right. <laughs> they know. we got to get peonies and tulips in the ground, and then yeah. our season can finally take a two-month break. I opened my to-do list, and it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> but, but, like, absolutely pressing things. Yeah, true. But, so, to summarize, this year was... Uh, just a big it started out very much one way and it's ended up very differently but it's been a wonderful ending and so because of that i feel wonderful momentum going into next year and we'll make videos about what we're planning next year and share all those details and stuff if you want more details about what we learned what didn't go well what we'll be repeating again i'll put that mid season review video i think you'll really like that it's good because we're sitting in our flowers at the time yeah, we're sitting in front of the Zinnia field and it's just like it's warm and green and we were complaining about grasshoppers where it's like now I would love to sit out in a warm <laughs> grassy field, but never can do Where do those again. grasshoppers go? Don't, it's grass. I don't want to there's think about no, There's none right now. I hope they all died. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. But I made cheesecake brownies and I know the kids want to eat them, but we have to finish filming. So time to go eat brownies and i hope this is a helpful video we'll put a bunch of interesting links and all that fun stuff in the description like comment share subscribe all the fun algorithm things and we appreciate your guys' support oh my gosh we need to start saying like i know early subscribe on subscribe earlier in i know because by the time they get to the end it's like hey, we look, are your subscribers i know people want to <laughs> but just like all of us we kind of forget to do it
Yeah, you're not like purposely not liking it because you're mad at it while you're watching. You just like forget to do it. And you're like, but it would be really helpful to us in the algorithm. So please, you know, but right. we're excited. We hope that you guys like this channel and it's helpful and it's different from other content creators. And we're excited to keep going. You conclude it. Ooh, I don't, I, I'm not good at all these bumper intro you're not and a outro. Bumper man. I'm not a cold open dude. No, you don't have not an unprepared. You don't have cold like open. a synthesizer. What's the term for closing? It's not cold close because you're warmed up at that point. Chilly end. The ch no. <laughs> the warm end, but that Ew, sounds that's gross. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> I do want to laugh about. Hopefully, your lighting is good. I found my little spotlight here. I'm feeling very Kim. Which we learned is a magnetic back. I'm feeling very. Our lovely. special live lighting is well, in a different our place. Can lights are like. Right. Dungeon -esque. And we're hoping the mic worked. I had to. Yeah. You know, we I know. And I gesticulate. We spent all this said. money on the cottage, and then I won't spend another dime on a good microphone. <laughs> we're done. We've spent all of our budget. Profitability. No more spending. Maybe year four, you guys will get the full studio Psst, set up. Puppet. We need more monetization. We need heavy YouTube money. Help us reach our YouTube dreams. <laughs> but we're we're promising to not let this become a content farm. Yeah, that's this is a good way to end because of how we started. Yeah, we're trying to avoid the YouTube content farm trap where you do things for clicks. And you start to see that too in channels that exist longer. You start to kind of be able to pick up on like they're creating projects for content or they're purchasing in order to clearly like make that video versus this is a little bit more organically what's happening and they want to bring you along with it and obviously the temptation becomes a lot harder when you're making like mad money per video and stuff but we hope to stay a bit more true to the original intention and we have to be because like a youtube channel can't be passed down to our kids really no the farm can be and we That's want them to have saying. yes we want them to have this product a profitable, profitable farm, farm. So that in 10, 20 years, if, but God willing, we're still doing it. If my back yeah. can keep up with the, the <laughs> pace of it, but hopefully we get it so streamlined that it's, it's not as demanding. You just don't do anything anymore. You're just like, well, <laughs> we got a couple of years so I can just manage and the kids perfectly weed. You still have all that mundane stuff. Like dad, remember when you actually used to plant? You're like, I've done my time, son. And I planted all those peonies. <laughs> all right you close it because you're better that was a good close that was a good close to... well nobody watches at this point anyway they do we There's have like no 20 people watching right Stop now but we have true fans i wonder how many i wish that youtube would give you like the total number of people that watched to the end that's a good question they only tell you Total view count. I don't know when that gets counted. Do you know counted. what we should do? We should, give a, we should give a secret word. And if they hear that word, put it in the comments. Ooh, a secret like, word. Like, like, I mean, we get some comments. No, it would be like popcorn. <laughs> and if you get to this point, you have to comment popcorn in the comments. And then everyone else is going to be like, what are these weirdos commenting? And then we're all going to know like, who the, we get those who people, the real ones are. But like, are. nobody, do that watch, not popcorn. If only 100 people watch to the very end of this video. It's bomb. You're not going to get a 100 people saying popcorn in the comments. I know because they might not be like true loyal fans. There might be if you're some a like loyal fan. You've watched if this. You're like a, if you're a Judas who just like hate watches us, don't comment popcorn. <laughs> Only the real you ones. Hate watch us for 50 minutes. <laughs> what a commitment that would be to it's hate watch someone for 50 minutes. I don't know. They exist. It's a wild, wild west out it there is. on the internet. I mean, every moment of this, and I, I no. watched it. We'll end with this. Isn't, isn't that like, what no, is that? we're ending 2023 no, with that? a secret word. This is where it's what's come that? to. That's like the, like your captor. What's that like phrase? Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. Where you end up loving your captor. I hope we don't. I hope I'm not the captor. If you Stockholm syndrome this video to the end. <laughs> Popcorn's not for you. <laughs> Let's see how many people we can get to write the word popcorn in the comments and then say the popcorn, happy new year's the popcorn emoji is also accepted popcorn emoji <laughs> happy new year's is an acceptable way to signal to us it's a good... our truest and most true fans which we appreciate hardcore fans because and i know many of you by name and i think that's wonderful <laughs> and we love the international 
yes. friends we have that, that watch yes. us and celebrate us. So uh, it's really, really cool to, I mean, it is fun to do these YouTube videos. I think it's fun. I like it. And people from Belgium and then people correcting us from France who are like, you I mean, butchered. Obviously you don't have a Dutch accent. No, I what was the p and &E I butchered? No, Groot. Okay, what That's was it? how you say it. Groot. You, it's still going to be so bad. Groot. No, our Denmark ladies are going to be like, please stop. Groot. It's so, <laughs> it's you, The G is silent. But you guys need to talk to Marvel and Disney who yeah, I'm named sure. that character I'm in sure Guardians Marvel's of the Galaxy. Like, Groot. let's check with Belgium first on how we say Yeah, but this. they butchered it for the world. So it's Groot it's now. It's not our fault is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Groot. <laughs> I am Groot. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but please we love those international i mean people it, are like end the video end it just end it cut it okay we love you we're excited about next year popcorn see you in the next video